How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Black Metal Rebellion. I'm your host, Jesse Morgan, aka Slammerella. It's been a bit since we've been on the channel here, but as you saw from the title, we are doing a review. This was supposed to have been done the end of January, beginning of December, but since the record label was a little bit late getting the CDs to Phantom, they had to take a little bit longer to get their review copy sent to me. So they included a couple extras, which was super duper nice of them. Came in this metal as fuck packaging. Thanks, Phantom. Thanks, JC Garcia for that, aka Mr. Necrohex. What they included in this was a patch and a pin. Let's check out the pin first. So this is the pin. It's white with their logo. I don't know how well this is going to show up, but there we go. Minus the glare. Pretty cool. Got the axe. The Phantom logo and then the Executioner there in white. Probably going to throw that on the vest with this being their Handed to Execution patch. Really sick stuff here. Digging the red outline and the, the logo and the blue Executioner there with the axe and the upside down cross. Yeah, super old school looking thrash stuff there. And what we're here to talk about today is this, their debut album, Phantoms Handed to Execution, some lethal metal, <laughs> some speed and thrash metal from Mexico. These guys started in 2021, so just after the pandemic, and they released this officially October 27th in 2023, so last year. Hard to believe that last year was 2023. Crazy, right? Before this, they only had like three demos and a split with uh, a few different bands on it, so if you're interested maybe go hunt down that split but for the most part this is their main material here here's the back of the c by the way with the track listing although i will say if you get a downloaded digital copy of this through Bandcamp. Some of the track listings might be messed up. Ravager Hunts is Speed Hammer and Necrohex is actually Holdfast and, and Holdfast is listed as Payback, etc., etc. It's all weird, but the proper track listing is this on the actual CD and inside the booklet. So let's show that now. There's the pretty cool looking CD. I really dig that art. Most people just throw on their cover art from the, the front of the album on the CD, but nope, they actually did some different stuff on this. They got the speed metal wheel in behind the executioner there. And they got a photo of the band behind the tray there. And I noticed on here, if you look in close where the drums are, it says Gail Rodriguez on drums, but on Metal Archives, it says JP Alatore is on drums. So I guess Gail Rodriguez was in the band long enough to record this and then either got fired or left for whatever reason. And JP Alatore is, I guess, who's taking on the responsibility of drums from there on in. But speaking of the members, the guitars and vocals for this project is JC Garcia, aka Necrohex. And the other guitarist is Harrell Mortis, pretty cool nickname. And on bass we have Rare Tavizon, or on here it's Rare Taviz. So I'm not sure which one is his actual name or whatever he wants to go by, but on Metal Archives they have him listed as Rare Tavizon. Either way, that's the members on this. Let's talk about the vocals of this album, shall we? So the vocals were the forefront of the mix for sure, especially if you got some good stereo headphones. It's on par or slightly above the guitars in this. The style was consistent and the performance was consistent as well throughout the album. The stylings of vocals you can expect are these gritty, ravenous, kind of mid-tone growls, but it also has a bit of this cavernous reverb effect to it for the most part. And you'll hear every now and then the odd slightly higher screaming tone, like higher pitched, but not too much. It doesn't get into the whole like, ah, thing that some of the <laughs> thrash metal bands do that's kind of closer to power metal. So I'm glad it doesn't have that in it, but it, it's getting a little bit 
higher, but it still growls for the most part, even when it does go higher pitched. So that's what we can expect from the vocals. As for the guitars now, they were mid to high in the mix, solid tone, very full and punchy, especially again, if you have stereo headphones on. It's a different experience though, if you're just listening to it kind of like on a small speaker or, or through a TV that doesn't really have the greatest system set up. So make sure you really do listen to it on a good system or on stereo headphones. But let's talk about the riffs and such. The The overall speed and tempo of this album was, was really fast. There's a lot of noodly, crazy thrash compositions when it came to like solo-y type stuff. Very talented guitarist for sure. Again, solos galore. There's even some harmonized guitar sections where they're playing tone or two above each other and mixing the two layers and it sounded really good. You could also expect crunchy and and groove laden power chords and there's even the odd slower kind of menacing moody compositions that created an ominous vibe all right let's talk about the bass the bass was low to mid in level for the most part minus the track reaper's bane where it was actually fairly loud and had quite a bit of gain and or distortion to it and uh again the bass was mostly like a, a, a clacky at times distorted tone. It was more of a percussive focused bass styling and complemented the drums more, but it definitely made each track fuller regardless. Okay, let's talk about the drums. They were mid to high in the mix, just slightly under the guitars. It was another consistent performance and a high level effort throughout. There was some speedy fills and well-placed tom work. There is definitely a bunch of Euroblast going through this. There's some quick snare rolls. And speaking of the snare, it was kind of this mid-level snap, not too snappy, but not too like like Saint Anger. <laughs> The kick drums were very punchy though, again, especially if you had those stereo headphones in. But the only thing that I would say that might catch your ear if you are a technical listener is the cymbals and hi-hat were very bright and tinny at times. A lot of splashy kind of distorted sound to the, to the hi-hat. And that's about all I could say for the drums, besides that he's a very talented drummer. All right, let's move on to my favorite tracks of this album, starting off with track number three, Handed to Execution. It basically represents the entire album as a whole. It has a solid intro slash build up at the beginning of the song and then goes into full speed blast straightaway mode in the middle section. Has some insane solos near the post mid slash end part of the song. Has some excellent gallop style riffs and the end revs up and smashes to completion. Second favorite track on this has to be number seven and that is speed hammer it is the shortest and fastest track coming in at two minutes and 43 seconds but it does start off with an unexpected slower groovier intro but of course turns up the velocity for the middle it has some catchy course chants speed hammer really really cool and has a nice couple of noodly solos near the middle to the end part and full speed thrash ending for that extra cherry on top. Third favorite track on this has to be number nine, which is the last track on the album called Payback. This has a, a nice, soulful, heartfelt intro and ending. They bring it back just to kind of go full circle with this track, but the middle is more of that zippy, thrash riff laden stuff and of course that pounding bass that might be slightly too loud but i can't finish off the favorite tracks portion of this without giving an honorable mention to track number six necro hex just an excellent track that didn't quite reach as far as the three tracks that I just mentioned, but definitely in competition for one of my favorites on this album. All right, let's talk about my overall thoughts. Phantom definitely studied from the book of Metallica's Ride the Lightning and Bathory's The Return hard. And I mean they ate that shit for breakfast every day. The influences are definitely seen throughout. Phantom were bringing that absolutely crazy old school thrash with haunting first wave black metal vocals, all by with slightly better production. And let me tell you, your neck better be tightly fastened on or it might snap clean off after listening to Handed to Execution. Also lastly again, Highly recommending listening to this on a really good solid pair of stereo headphones or an old school surround sound system 
for the fullest listening experience just to get that bass and kick drum punch and overall production value because if you're again listening to it just kind of off of your phone with no headphones on or just off of a tv that doesn't really have the greatest system it's not going to have the same effect let's move on to the last section of my review and that is where i talk about some weaknesses or improvements that the album might have or need so for this one i would say maybe slightly less reverb i know they're going for that cavernous feel of probably the first wave of black metal but it kind of makes the vocals a little bit jumbled and hard to follow along to what JC is trying to say. And there's even a bit of a peek into that type of vocaling in Payback, which is kind of perfect. It has had a part or two in it where the reverb wasn't quite as high and you could really hear what he was trying to say, which was nice. Secondly, I would say if you have the control to, I would say hone in on the cymbal or hi-hat mixing better, maybe a little less splashy sound and maybe add in some compression to it if you have to get control of those wild sounds going on. I'm not sure if it was the mics or the soundboard that you were working with, but that definitely is something that I noticed probably could add to production value. Lastly, I would say maybe a little more original riffs. Not that this album didn't have it, but you could definitely tell there was some blatant copy pasta going on with Metallica riffs and the like. Although I do love early Ride the Lightning and Kill Em All and early Bathory and stuff like that. I, I do really want to see what you guys have to offer for yourself. I feel like there are some shining moments here and there where you did find yourself on this album and that was really, really cool. So yeah, basically we need to find out what makes Phantom Phantom and show that on the next release. So all of that being said and done, I'm giving this album Handed to Execution a solid eight out of 10. This is definitely a band to look out for. Go check out the album on YouTube if you can. I'll have links in the description box below for their band camp and Facebook, Instagram, etc., etc., etc. Thank you so much to JC for sending me a copy of Phantom's Hand to Execution to review. Super stoked to have this in my collection. And this is definitely making its way onto my Thrash Fest ASAP. So cheers, thanks for watching, and until next time, for glory, for the Rebellion, Slammerella out.